Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Madden 24 modded franchise. Today, we are going to be recapping the regular season for the first year um, with New England. And <clears throat> let's just say it was a year we want and cannot wait to forget. Um, you know, it started off rocky, right? We, we lost against the 49ers. Then we beat the Seattle Seahawks in a very close game. We got destroyed by the Colts. We beat the Bills in a close game. And we lost to, and we beat the Dolphins. And that was, um, this was around the last time we took a look here, um, physically on the field at our team. But uh, we did end up losing a close one against the Chargers. And we went on our bye. And, uh, well, let's just go ahead and say it wasn't good when we returned. We ended up dropping a game against the Dolphins. So they got their revenge in dominating fashion. And that would go ahead and spark in a losing streak that just couldn't that we just couldn't get away from. We we lost the Steeler to, to the Steelers. We lost a close game against the Cardinals. Lost to the Jets. Lost to the Titans. Lost to the Jets again. Lost to the Rams. Lost to the Jaguars. And then got destroyed against the Buffalo Bills. As they get their revenge. Almost dropping 500 yards on our defense. So we haven't we the last time we've won a game was week seven against the Miami Dolphins. A little bit. Skaggs stays in the pocket. Good patience. It's tipped. It's caught. You've got to be kidding me. And just like that, New England, thanks to Chase Claypool's amazing catch, they are set up for a game winner, and it is good on Thursday Night Football. It has been very bad what if you, you're if you're picking like if you're picking like third and you just want to bypass two to grab todd I'd, I'd i'd help i'd hook you up no no i'm not doing that get out my face get and somehow we still figure out how to just lose i told you to get out of my face you stupid son of a hey I'm a my, my my g my gm's dumb too man i get it but mini hammer Still has a job in New England. We're going to give him time to turn this team around. Rome was not built in a day. And we don't expect that here. But we do expect some improvements going into next year. Taking a look at our players, Jimmy Skaggs struggled. Throwing 19 touchdown passes and 20 interceptions. The second most in the league. He also was under 60% completion percentage. I had a hunch he wasn't ready to start in the league, and that hunch was right. He wasn't ready. And we pray that this doesn't damage his growth. Because there is a flip side, a, a bright light ahead of the tunnel when we talk about Jimmy Skaggs. He had a hidden dev, and that dev trait was Superstar. So, he is a project, but I think he is a project worth keeping around with the superstar um, ability. But uh, something does have to change because he's not happy here as of right now. And let, to be quite frank, we're not the too keen on him either. So, we've got to get over this hump and figure out a way to make this guy work. I mean, he's a superstar dev. Now, there is some worry that maybe he loses the superstar dev and goes down to star because of the poor performance he had. I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens. In the run game, Stevenson did not do well. 
He didn't do bad, but you know, he's under a thousand yards. Um, Skaggs was averaging uh, more per carry there, and Jimmy Skaggs actually left the pocket a pretty good bit, more than we were thinking he would, and he did pretty good, despite fumbling the ball four times. Uh, Stevenson did get into the end zone at 10 times, which is pretty good. Uh, rookie running back Mobley didn't see much action, but the little bit of action he did see, it wasn't crazy impressive, 3.4. Yards per carry. In the receiving game, I think this has a lot to do with why Skaggs has struggled. There's just no one really there. Devontae Parker being our best on the roster, you know, he would have the most yards, but only 694 yards receiving. Uh, our rookie tight end, Ben Keenan, would be second on the team with five touchdowns. And our free agent acquisition, Chase Claypool, did around the same as well. It was just not a good year in the end for receiving. As far as defense goes, it it's really bad. It gets worse, matter of fact. Michael Pierce, a guy that I picked up in free agency, did lead our team in sacks, but... It was just six. So Wise Jr. just isn't good. Um, he's going to regress even more so. And we have to figure out a way to address getting to the quarterback. Christian Barmore got a dev upgrade during the year. Um, he had a breakout game when it came to stopping the run. But he just is that, and that's all he is. He's not going to be a pass rusher, it looks like, from what we can see here. Though we did decide to go ahead and give him a contract, a two-year contract. And uh, that, star, that, that Superstar Dev upgrade does make me excited for him going into the future. But uh, as far as picking the ball off, we didn't do that a lot either. Uh, just two players with two interceptions, Davis Gathers and Kyle Duggar. So this is some historical bad, historically bad football. Um, and we've got to address this. I didn't expect this to happen, uh, to be quite frank with you. Um, I'm surprised. I've never, I don't think this has ever happened to me where I finished worst in the league, but it has now. So I can't say that anymore. So we will be picking first in the upcoming draft. Um, yeah, that, that happened. So we, have first dibs here on these prospects, and it, it only gets worse here, guys. Um, it's a it's a quarterback heavy draft, meaning we if we would have waited to uh, take a quarterback in this draft, we would have had a lot of options to do so. But also, it means if we want to trade down the value isn't necessarily as high as it would be right because there's a lot of options for quarterback uh chris todd looks to be standing out here he reminds me of the one guy from madden 21 tanking with todd this is his son right here chris todd who looks to be just as good um do you take a quarterback here with your first overall pick i don't know guys or do you we go or somebody else, you know, to help out the, the the team. I've never had the number one overall pick, and I feel a lot of pressure because if we don't hit and hit big with this, that means we, you know, are slowing ourselves down even more so. And as far as outside of the quarterback position, there isn't necessarily a a sure take 
here, in my opinion. Um, so it's gonna be interesting to see. I'm gonna do more research on these guys, but you can just see them here. We've got to make sure we do not waste this first overall pick because I don't plan on having another one for the rest of this series. Okay. We want to turn this team around. But I am not I am not, you know, out of the mindset of of not taking a quarterback because Jimmy Skaggs didn't play well and maybe he's too big of a project or if he loses his superstar dev, then I really think we take a quarterback here. And if that is the case, which one out of you know, the five here do you take? Can't help but to see Chris Todd with those two A um, attributes stick out a pretty good bit. Or, you know, we could really use a wide receiver to help us. But this wide receiver class doesn't seem to be a good one. Or, to well, to be a deep one. There is one guy, though, that I do like, Greg Colbert. He, uh... Seems pretty good. 6'4", 232, 22 years of age. He's got phenomenal catching traffic and catching in general. Really good release. And it says he's a top fit in New England. I don't know if they take in consideration his, you know, his morale and stuff. Like, if that's what top fits mean or if they're just saying, you know, we need a wide receiver and he would fit well here. He does have great to elite strength and speed and jumping and agility. So I am intrigued with Greg Colbert, but is he worth a first overall pick and literally the number one overall pick in the whole draft? I don't know. The route running concerns me, but everything else seems great. Greg Colbert might be our pick. I'm leaning towards him if we don't end up taking a quarterback. So we've got to decide on Jimmy Skaggs if we're going to hit the panic button and move on from him or are we going to ride it out with Jimmy Skaggs and start building around him. I'm not sure yet. I got to think about it, but time will tell. Moving over to our talent trees. We are going to work on some of these trees here. Um, just, you know, honestly, the O-line always getting help from the O-line is a good option but that is uh, where we're at so I guess what you can expect next is um, the playoffs which I won't be commentating on but I I, I think I'd, I I want I want to commentate on the Super Bowl possibly but I'm not sure yet. I'm still deciding that. But uh, as far as the standings go, this is just so we have a record of them. The Lions, Chiefs, and Bills all finish 14-3. and three. And the rest is as such here. So there we are. We tied with the Saints, but I'm not sure what the tiebreaker is necessarily. But... um. We are picking first. But yeah, these <laughs> pretty, pretty bad year. Um, honestly, I didn't expect it to be this bad, but we've got a lot of work to do here if we are going to really try and one, keep our jobs, but turn New England back into the powerhouse that they once were under Tom Brady. So we're going to do some playoff football. You know, I, I would like to at least, you know, watch the AFC and NFC games maybe, or maybe just one of them. But of course, we're going to be covering 
the Super Bowl. And that's the most important thing. Um, I probably won't commentate over it, but I am going to think about it. I would like to save my voice, though, for the offseason. So we'll see. But nonetheless, these are the teams. Uh, the Chiefs being the first seed in the FC and the Detroit Lions. Um, you got the Vikings squeezed in there and the Packers. And then on the other side, the Chargers and the Raiders squeak in. So that's interesting. But uh, yeah, that is going to do it for this one. You guys, let me know what you're thinking. You know, who should we, you know, seriously think about taking? Should we look at moving on from Jimmy Skaggs? I mean, I guess it, for me, I don't want to if he's going to keep that superstar dev trait. I think we... We do. It's worth writing it out. Uh, I, I do believe he's a he's more than a 70 overall. He's just getting negatively impacted by morale. He's really a 73 overall. So I think we really got to think about that. We have a solid offensive line for now. Some of these guys may go due to age, but I think we just we got to get you know, some talent around Jimmy Skaggs before we can really know what we have there. And as far as the defense, we were the worst defense in the league, so we really have to also address defense. And, um, you know, we don't really have trade assets, but I do think something has to change. The only good person I can see worth building around is Christian Barmore because he's 25 with a superstar dev now so it was a rough year but we're going to put it past us focus on the playoffs and then the postseason and keep it moving so that is going to be it guys for this one let me know who you think is worth taking in the draft and I'll see you guys on the next one